Welcome back to the den for the third episode of Rambles, Rants, and Razors. Yeah. In this episode, I want to talk about badgers, the four legged, four, four legged little woodland creatures, and particularly their use in shaving brushes. And I want to bring some analogies to this, in my opinion. While I'm ranting, I know there might be some people out there who start raging. Remember, this is just one person's opinion, but this is also another side of the story, something that you don't always see PETA and other people proclaiming out there because everybody has agendas. I don't have any investment in any badger sales whatsoever. I buy badger brushes and I will not profit from the purchase or sale of any badger products. I am not affiliated with any ranch or farm, anything like that. I'm just a consumer who uses badger brushes. And for years, I've laughed at some of the lies that go on out there. But first, let's get a little background on a badger. Badgers live underground in what's called a set, an S-E-T-T. There's eight different species of badger around the world. The word badger comes from the French word bachure, which means digger. A male badger is called a boar. A female, a lady, is called a sow, and their offspring, the younglings, are called cubs. So a boar, a sow, and cubs. All fibers of brushes, whether it's a synthetic or boar, a horse, which I didn't grab, or a badger, are all great in shaving because they exfoliate the skin, raise and lift the hairs, and they also bring blood to the surface to the surface of your skin. And what that helps to do is it speeds up cell recovery time. And that helps to promote skin growth, that helps to slow the aging process. So there's actually quite a few scientific proven benefits to using a shave brush and it can come from any fiber. You don't have to use badger to achieve that. But one of the biggest benefits is the skin, the blood being stimulated, the skin being stimulated and that brings the blood to the surface. And that's really, really good for skin cell turnover time. It, it makes it grow, makes your skin heal more quickly. Because remember, we are damaging our, our skin when we put a blade against it. So first, let me paint an analogy that I think a lot of people will understand. There's a misconception out there that badgers are slaughtered, harvested, harvested, murdered, just for their hair. And that couldn't be any further from the truth. That's actually a bald-faced lie spun by people who have their own agendas. Remember, everyone has an agenda. And the first person to tell you they don't have an agenda has an agenda. My agenda is just I'm tired of hearing people say things that aren't true. It's, just, it's been years that I've heard this. My analogy. I live in the United States of America, Oregon. We've got farms, ranches, all over the place. No badgers. You can't do that here in North America. But what we do have a lot of is cattle, heifers, bovine. No one slaughters a cow for leather. You won't see a farmer or a rancher go out into the field and slaughter a cow just for a pair of boots and then leave the rest of the animal out in the field to rot and be fed to the buzzards and the bugs. Leather 
those leather boots, that leather purse, that leather jacket, that leather belt is a byproduct, a byproduct of a bigger industry, and that's the meat industry. Every business is out to make as much money as they possibly can off of their product. A cattle rancher, who I know many of, and I'm related to some, a cattle rancher is looking to make as much money off of that head of cattle as they possibly can. So they slaughter the animal for the meat, and then everything else that they can't sell as meat, you try to recoup and turn that into something else. So the hide almost always gets turned into leather. No cows are slaughtered for leather. Cows are slaughtered for the meat. In bad, in, with badgers in China, the same thing is true. The, Ch the Chinese, their culture is obviously different than the American culture. They have delicacies in places like Thailand, the Balkans, Russia, China, that we don't have here, including rat. Yeah, rat, R-A-T, like we normally feed to like a snake. A rat, there's rat markets, rat farms even, to where rat is a delicacy. And you can buy rat that's already cooked, or you can even do like what we do here in America with lobsters, and you can go to the market, buy a live rat, bring it home, and slaughter it, and then prepare it fresh. The rat market is huge. In China, they don't have a rat infestation problem for a big reason, and that's because they eat them. Here in America, they're a pest, and we have lots of them. Well, not lots of them, but we have more than we want. That's because nobody's eating them other than maybe a stray cat. In China, there's about 12 large farms. The two biggest ranchers, and I'm not going to get their names exactly right, but I'm going to do my best. The one gentleman's name is Jing Ha Ben, and the other is Dai Chengling. So I'm just going to call them Jing and Dai, D-A-I. Excuse me. Jing has the biggest ranch by head, and that's 6,000, and it's a big farm up in northern China. Dai has three separate farms, and he was the first to raise badgers in captivity. It is true that there is poaching that goes on, and people eat wild badger. Again, eat wild badger, and then the hair is a byproduct. So what are they doing? The hair is used in seat cushions, shave brushes, makeup brushes. That's the byproduct. The animal is being harvested for medicine, cosmetics, and meat. And how they get the medicine and cosmetics is from the fat and some of the blood. And then of course the meat comes from the meat. Jing said that the hair market makes up about 30% of his business, but only about 10% of his profit. So 30% of his overall business is done in the exchange sale of hair, but it only accounts for about 10% of his overall profits. And if you talk to a cattle rancher in America, I don't know, but I imagine that you would get a very similar type number when it comes to the sale of leather. Hides currently in China, no, sorry, an individual badger is producing about a thousand yan per animal, per head. That comes out to about $147 American. So if I have one badger harvesting it, I can earn roughly $147. Only 10% of that 
is going to be from the sale of hair. So about $14 and 70 some cents is going to be from the sale of hair. The other 90% is coming from the fat and the meat for medicine, cosmetics, and dinner. Like I said, poaching is a problem. Um, badgers do not become sexually mature until the, about the age of three. So they don't start producing cubs until they're about three years old. A badger in the wild only lives on average about two years. The oldest that they'll live to is about 14 years, but on average, they only live a couple of years. And that's even true for, we have cats here in America. And I believe the, if your cat goes outside, they only lived like six or seven. And that's here in the States, a cat. So let's wrap this up. Badger ranchers in China, just like cattle ranchers in North America, are not getting rich by selling the buy product. Once again, badger hair only amounts to roughly 10% of the overall profit that a badger rancher will earn harvesting badgers. The other 90% comes from the fat that is used for medicine and cosmetics. And the rest of that comes from the cell of the meat that is used in dishes for consumption, human consumption. It is a delicacy. Yes, there is a problem with poaching. Here in America, we have a problem with poaching as well. Not cattle because ranchers fire back, but other critters, right? Right. I'm not here to tell you that badgers are better than synthetic. I do prefer badgers over synthetic. That's my personal taste. But that's not the point of this video. So before you become a keyboard hero and start typing something down below, just know that I'm not trying to tell you that badger is better than synthetic or anything else. What I'm telling you is that a lot of what you're hearing is complete and other utter badger crap. Yeah, it's badger crap. So I hope you understand that because that is the center of today's rant, of this rant right here. 10%, no one is getting rich harvesting badger hair. Okay. If anyone's getting rich, it's the middleman somewhere, but it's not the rancher. It's the little big things. Some of the little big things is not believing anything and everything that you read on the internet. When you read something on the internet, when you watch a video on YouTube and some guy, some gal is telling you something, do your own homework, research it in the description below. I'll have a few links. Don't take my word for it. Go take a look at those links. Then if you still have questions or you're still doubting, do some Google searches and then make your own opinion, but stop believing something that you read on Reddit or in some forum. Jeez, oh Pete, it's a little big things. A little big things. Not believing all the bad crap. Y'all take care. I appreciate you being here with me and listening to my badger rant. Take care of yourself until next time. Shave on.